Good morning and welcome to St. John in the Wilderness Church. We're so glad that you have joined us, um, either using Facebook or YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. It is the first Sunday after Pentecost, Trinity, Trinity Sunday. And today's service, we're gonna try to keep it a little bit short because at 10.30 today, our new bishop, the Right Reverend Craig Loya, will be uh, celebrating and preaching his first sermon in the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. And we're hoping that, that all those who are tuning in to us will also want to tune in to that service at 10. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal Father who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the water from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good.
And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day, seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And when Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Again, welcome to St. John in the Wilderness here on Trinity Sunday. Um, Typically on a Trinity Sunday, many in many pulpits around uh, the world, they there would be an effort to try to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, This is the only Sunday in the life of the church that is dedicated to a theological construct, uh, meaning the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, rather than such as an an event of Jesus Jesus' life. Um, And so I've preached those sermons before. I preach sermons about how the Trinity is like an onion that you peel away, or as a, how, how I, as a father, am also a son, and as an individual, I've preached uh, sermons um, about how water comes in various forms, and all of those sermons, when I reflect back upon them, were actually all heretical sermons, trying to figure out the very nature of God and missing the mark. Good efforts, perhaps, but also missing the mark. What the Trinity really tells us is that what God is at God's very core is love. And what love is at its very core is relationship, it's connection. And so what the doctrine of the Trinity is, is saying is us, is our experience, the human experience of the God who is relationship. God who is love, is relationship. And thus, everything in our lives, everything as followers of Jesus that we say and do, it should be in an effort to connect, in an effort to be in relationship. So today, it's not a day when we should be speaking doctrine. Today, in light of everything that is going on in our world, in light of a pandemic that uh, is affecting so many, but mostly uh, those on the margins, whether they be the elderly or the poor, the dispossessed, those who have been marginalized for all sorts of reasons, they're the ones who are receiving the the brunt of, of this pandemic. So we live in that world, but we're also on the heels of um, an event that has shaken the world, not just the city of Minneapolis, not just this nation, but actually it's reaching to the far corners of the world, and that was the murder of George Floyd. So as I reflect upon those events, a pandemic that is hitting so many on the margins, and violence against people with a different skin color than I have, people with darker skin color, and not just in one incident, but centuries of violence and oppression and suppression of people with dark skin. When I reflect upon all of that and when I reflect upon God's call to me as a Christian to be about love, to be about relationship, to be about connection, then this day we can't just pray about things. This day we can't just preach sermons. This day we, as followers of Jesus, need to actually get up and be connected, 
with those who are different. We need to be connected with those who are on the margins and the poor, not just talk about it, not just pray about it, but actually be with the poor in a lot of ways. But I think that the events of this day, the events of our nation, are calling us to a new place as the church. They're calling us to a, a new place as followers of Jesus, and it's a place where we don't just talk about stuff anymore, though we need to talk, we need to speak boldly the truth of the love of God. But my goodness, it can't stay there anymore, can it? We need to go forth and be connected. We need to actually be in relationship with brothers and sisters on the margins. And so this day, I pray that in all the circles of your life, whether it, whether it be your congregation, whether it be the circles, your political circles, wherever it may be that you find yourselves, that you start speaking, that you start speaking about love, that you start speaking about connection and, and speaking about equality and speaking about raising up everybody because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And if Jesus is commissioning us to go forth into the, to the far corners of the world and to make disciples, what that really means is that we are called to bring other people into a knowledge and experience of the love of God. We need, we are called to raise all up. So be a people of, of action, of prayer, of speech, and also be a people of good hope. Because I don't know if you missed it in the gospel, but the very end part is really important. And it's Jesus saying, I will be with you until the end of the ages. I will be with you always to the end of the ages. In the midst of a pandemic, Jesus is with us. In the midst of the violence of the last two weeks, Jesus is with us. Even when the going gets rough, Jesus doesn't run away. He's with us, commissioning, commissioning us to be people of love. So gird up thy loins, people. Gird up thy loins and go forth with courage, go forth with confidence, go forth with the knowledge that our Lord Jesus has gone before us and goes with us this day and always. Amen. We will continue with our prayers this morning. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Craig and his family, as they begin their life and ministry among us. For Bishop Brian and his family, as they take their leave from us. For the people of this parish family, as we persevere to stay connected and faithful while remaining physically apart. And for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. I ask your prayers for those who peacefully protest and those who courageously battle against the injustices and inequalities and oppression of people of color in this nation. I ask your prayers for those who continue to serve with integrity in the police force and those who seek to make much needed changes from within. Show us that for which we have need to repent. Guide us into better ways, break our hearts and heal all divisions. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. 
Particularly, we pray for those who have become sick with the coronavirus and for their families. And we pray for those who continue to be oppressed or imprisoned by systemic inequalities perpetuated by racist ideology and heartless apathy. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for George Floyd and all other persons of color who have died as a result of police misconduct and brutality. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially St. John in the wilderness. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now together let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Just a few announcements uh, to keep before you uh, this day. Um, we are in our summer schedule here at St. John in the Wilderness, um, and I want to review that schedule very quickly with you. On Sundays, we do our worship at 10 a.m., um, and usually uh, at 11 o'clock on Sundays, we will do a virtual coffee hour uh, using uh, Google Meet format. Today we will not be doing that because of uh, the bishop's um, uh, first Eucharist and sermon at St. Mark's Cathedral, which begins like right now at 10.30.
So I hope you'll join in on that, um, on that service as well. And also tonight, um, I will be leading uh, the Rector's Forum at 7 p.m. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. is the Rector's Forum. On Mondays, if you would like to speak with me directly, I have office hours from 10 to 2, and on um, Thursdays as well. On Tuesdays uh, at 7 p.m., we do a Bible study based on the readings for the coming up week. Again, that's Tuesdays at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., we do an evening prayer service, um, uh, and that will be Facebook and YouTube as well. And then, of course, on Friday, you'll get the e-news that tells you about everything that's going on. Uh, we, like so many other congregations, are doing our best to respond to uh, the needs of our community right now. And with all of the destruction um, in Minneapolis, um, a parishioner has offered to, um, to gather up supplies. They need food still. Lots of food is still needed and supplies are needed. And uh, this family will be bringing uh, those supplies down to folks in need in Minneapolis. We're gonna find so many other ways to plug in and to be, and hopefully be part of the solution and be connected with people. But this is just one way and you'll learn more about that. Just you'll receive an, uh, an email um, and then check our website. Our website is the hub of it all and it's stjohnwilderness.org stjohnwilderness.org. So again, thank you uh, for joining us this morning. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.